Yes! It's alive! Hi, Jazz from Very Good Drinks here. And I wanted to share something that's quickly become one of my favorite things ever, and that is tapache. So tapache is a Mexican pineapple beer. It's a fermented drink. It couldn't be easier to make. Uh, we're gonna start a batch right here, right now. So what you need for tapache is a container. We need sugs. We need some spices if you are so inclined. Today we're gonna use cinnamon and Let's see, one, two, three, four, five points of a star of anise. I'm also gonna put a little bit of Earl Grey tea in this batch because I wanted to add a little bit of tannin. You can just go straight pineapple and sugar and it is delicious. So for this, we're going to just be using the pineapple skins and the skins are ripe with all that good tropical yeast from here in, in Thailand. For this batch, we're not gonna be adding any yeast starter to it, I'm just gonna Go straight on the au natural. I did give this a little bit of a rinse because there was kind of some uh, little buggies and stuff on it. So I rinsed it off. The meat of this pineapple is gonna get used for something else. So we're just gonna stick with skins. We're just gonna go down and around. Don't be too precious about this, you know? Kind of just roughly chop this up. What's gonna happen here is the natural yeast present in the pineapple skin is going to start munching on the sugars that are present. Sugars are gonna convert, be converted by the yeast into ethanol, ethyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol, and CO2. So it's important not to use a completely airtight seal without burping it like every so often because you can create a bomb that way. Uh, this one is not super airtight. Pressure builds up. It kind of just like bleeds itself. I found there are airlock containers and things you can buy, but we don't have any of that. There's always a hair, dude. Every time. Anything that is made by me is going to have a hair, probably. Uh, some people say the core adds bitterness. Didn't notice that in the last batch. The last batch, however, did have all the pineapple in it, so who knows. Bitterness is nice. Bitterness can sometimes equal complexity and balance. So we're going to start some Earl Grey tea. There's like bergamot and black tea flavor in here that's going to go hopefully pretty nicely with this. In order to get this sugar in a state that's going to be easily accessible to the yeast to munch on, we're going to first add a little bit of hot water to the sugar just to like make a quick syrup. You don't have to do that, but it's going to make it easier for the yeast to eat the sugar if it's already in a syrup. It's kind of an extra step, but I just want to like give our yeast like the best environment like for them to just have a good time. The other thing I need to mention about this is I'm using hot water to dissolve the sugar, but if you put like hot, hot water in here, it's gonna kill the yeast. While that's melting and that's steeping, I'm gonna break this up, give it a chance to infuse as much as possible. And that's actually really traditional in tapache recipes. In Mexico, they use piloncillo, which is like a Mexican brown sugar that's really like unrefined and dark. We're just using uh, regular cane sugar. Our tea looks nice and dark. So we've got drinking water here. I'm gonna put a little bit in here to cool this down. This is fridge cold. Then I'm gonna put four to five cups to what we're adding in is a cup and a half of sugar. We're gonna add our sugar syrup, add our tea. Mm. I'm just gonna top it up just a teensy bit more, but you want a bit of headspace here to give um, some room for the carbon dioxide. That is all she wrote. So you can give this a mix, but I'd say it's pre pretty well mixed. Melting this first really helps kind of get a nice consistent thing. We're gonna take this and put it over in the fermentation station. Two, two. Hopefully within a day or so, 
where we'll start to see some activity. There'll be some bubblage, there'll be some foam. That's how we know that the yeast is alive, it's eating, it's producing those alcohols and carbon dioxide. The longer it goes, the drier it becomes. The longer you wait, the more alcohol, but the less sweet. What we're gonna do is let this one go in what we call F1 or the first fermentation for three or four days, create the, the base to pache. So we'll come back and update you on this batch here in a couple of days. Look you guys. I see bubbles. They're awake. Check it out you guys, day one down and we got some nice activity going on here, which is good news. Our yeasty boys are at it again. We're checking in on the tapache. It has been four days. So we're gonna taste, see if we're at the sweetness level that we want. You can see there's been lots of bubbles, it's still very active, but I don't want it to get super, super dry or too alcoholic this time. Mm, it's lovely, really delightful. So I think for what I'm looking for, I'm gonna go ahead and strain it and start the secondary fermentation uh, where all of the carbonation will happen. We're going to carefully strain this off. Oof, this is you can do this. You just have to have confidence. Oh, bartender. That was actually pretty I'm pretty impressed with myself. Alright. There's a lot of sugar in this still. And that's okay because these yeasts are still eating the sugar. Still creating alcohol and CO2, which is what we want. The other thing to note here is you want to limit the amount of like air contact as much as possible. There are bacteria in the environment that love to eat alcohol. So once the alcohol is present, they can show up and basically start turning that alcohol into acetic acid which is essentially vinegar, which is not what you want. Or maybe it is. So that's nice to note. If you want to make some pineapple vinegar, you can. Once we get this in the bottle, like I said, I'm not going to add any more sugar this time because I think there's still plenty in here. The fermentation is going to continue. Leave this out in fairly room temp warm-ish place. It's going to continue to ferment. You don't want to open it anymore after this point for at least probably two, three, four days even, depending on your temperature. Um, but you're going to leave a little bit of space at the top here for the carbon dioxide to build. This is going to balloon out as the pressure builds. All of that carbon dioxide is going to have nowhere to go and it's going to be forced back into the liquid. And as it dissolves into the liquid, that's going to carbonate our beverage. Very good idea to label and date everything so you know how long it's been sitting. Um, you can keep track of, of where you're at. Okay, here's day two of the carbonation phase. There's definitely pressure building. The bottoms are bowed out. Remember these are all squished and now they're nice and plump. Uh, it's been three days in this bottle in the fermentation station and we've got lots of kind of foamy head It's been super active and you can tell by the lack of like ridges here. It is like completely Jam-packed with carbon dioxide. So it is rock hard right now It's carbonating nicely the second fermentation I find it's really nice to use a plastic bottle because you can visually see the fermentation process happening and you can see the carbon buildup and you can feel it when you press on it using a using a plastic bottle is really practical in that sense using glass bottles you have to use like fermentation grade bottles intended to be under high pressure 
or else they will like explode in your house. There's still some like yeast and floaties happening. There's all the dead yeast and sediment kind of floating down to the bottom also. By putting this in the fridge for the final night of fermentation, the alcohol and CO2 production will slow down. So we're gonna cool down, slowing the fermentation process and allowing the carbon dioxide to dissolve into the liquid and a lot of this dead yeast sediment to float to the bottom. When we go to drink, it'll be Perfect. Super excited. It's going really, really well. We'll come back tomorrow and finally get to try some. Really pumped. Right, let's put them in the fridge, I guess. <laughs> oh my God, I know. Uh, the project. I guess we're gonna drink some ginger beer. <laughs> Super excited. It's ready. As you can see, the foam has dissipated, and I think the the deal is done. You can see all of the, uh, the yeast has kind of floated down to the bottom here. And here's the exciting part, we get to like open it. Except it's also like a bomb, so it's exciting in that sense as well. All right, let's see how we did. There it goes, whoop! I am so proud of you guys. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's alive. We'll get someone to clean this up. Boom. Oh. To potch. All right. It smells good. It smells like, hmm, like pineapple funk. It smells like fucking trop tropics, like a tropical paradise. It's good. It smells like summertime, springtime thing. Drink it so I can have some. I'm thirsty. Okay, okay. It's killing me. Yes, dude. I'm so. Can I ask mm, you? Yeah. Super tasty. Complex. Oh my god. It's really good. It's wow. refreshing. Mm -hmm. It really works. It's so, so good. I totally, totally recommend this to anybody. Um, it's super cheap, really delicious, and a lot of fun, and super easy. So, go make tapache. Mm, I can't wait to drink some more. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you learned some things. Uh, please, please like and subscribe and follow along for more of uh, this kind of stuff. Very good drinks. Out. Go make some tapache.